Right, if those birds could just shut up for five seconds, that'd be brilliant. Hi everyone, hope you're doing well and welcome to a rather gloomy looking Monday morning in September in Belgrade, Serbia. The drone shots you saw already at the beginning were actually filmed yesterday on a nice sunny Sunday afternoon. But you know what, I think it provides a nice bit of contrast, right? So today we are exploring more examples of brutalist and modernist architecture in Belgrade. Why do I say more? Well, last year I filmed a video over in New Belgrade where we went to many blocks. We went to Televizorka, the places with like the TV windows, and also we went to the Western Gate. Today, we're at the Eastern Gate. Let's explore. Now, just to be clear, to begin with, these buildings aren't a tourist attraction. Um, they're not abandoned buildings, as I feature in many videos. These buildings are inhabited, so, you know, this is just a reflection of normal life in this area of Belgrade. So, of course, using the word explore is a bit weird because I'm not exploring. This is just normal life, you know. And obviously, I don't want to invade on people's privacy because people are just trying to go about their business, you know. So these three buildings, each of which are 279 feet tall, they're absolutely massive. Monolithic, imposing. I'm probably going to use those words a lot during this video, by the way, you have been warned. They uh, were built in the 1970s, as with many examples of brutalist architecture, 1973 to 76. And they were designed by an architect called Vida Cherkovitz. And each building is called Rudo, as in one, two, three. Um, and I believe that that's named after a small town in what is now Bosnia and Herzegovina, was Yugoslavia back in the day but I couldn't find whether the architect was born there or something apparently not if you know why these buildings are called that let me know down in the comments all right now these signs are everywhere now my Serbian is not fantastic it's kind of limited to Havala, Dovigenia, Jedan, Dva, Tri, Chetiri, Pet etc <laughs> but I can assume that this means something like beware caution and um, to do with the facade of the building I hope I'll check it after um, <laughs> because as you can imagine, a building like this from the 70s, you know, it's probably not going to receive the same level of maintenance in terms of investment as, say, the centre of the city would. And there are crumbling bits of concrete everywhere, so you do have to be careful. Um, yeah, lovely. Now, I've got to say, whenever I come to brutalist buildings in Serbia, it does remind me of the UK. Don't you think you call me dirty, you'll get smacked in the big Nero. Get your hair cut. And a bar. Because you don't know where to play. We ain't got no way to play. We play football out here. We play in the Sphinx. And then uh, all the old bags open the window. Get told we just move near a car, right? And they'll go, get away from my phone car. And that's shouldn't be weird because they do say that brutalist architecture originated in the UK. Obviously, post-war, a lot of cities, many buildings, residential buildings were destroyed because of the war and bombings. So there was a need for low cost communal housing like this. And, you know, when I walked up here yesterday, down there, there were all these garages and stuff. It just felt like I was in East London. It felt like I was at home. East Belgrade, East London, almost the same thing. But I do feel like the brutalist architecture in Belgrade is kind of iconic and it has a different feel to it, if you know what I mean. It's, um, you know, it might not be something that, as a Serb, you might think, what the hell, are you on crack? Why do you find this interesting? And that's a valid point, because if someone went to the UK and was like, oh my God, it's a 60s council block, um, I would probably think you were also completely nuts. <laughs> We're gonna go inside in a second. Hopefully I won't get stuck in a lift this time. Um, but first, let's have a look at the outside. You've got graffiti everywhere, as you'd expect. Serbian flag up there. And um, there are some businesses, I believe, on the lower levels. Um, but look at this, it's just iconic. And it might not be beautiful. It might not be polishing a turd, as many countries do. It's gray, it's monolithic. There's that word again. It's grim, it's concrete. Okay, let's check out inside. Classic uh, post box with all the um, names of the people on the post boxes. Classic lifts in these types of, these types of buildings. Um, you'll see why in a second. Okay, we're back to this lift. <laughs> Hola. Right, door closed. I read that it was 28 stories high, but this is 23, okay. Oh, this one, oh, this one's a bit more modern. Normally you have to 
shut them yourself and sometimes you have to hold them so that the lift then activates, if you know what I mean. But it looks like I'm not gonna get stuck in this one, brilliant. Now that is a view. Wowzers. Classic Serbia, of course, with the like orange terracotta roofs. And then down there you have more blocks. So, you know, it's not just New Belgrade that has this, types, this type of building. And in the distance there, you've got high rises being built. Floor 27. Oh, lighting. So the other lift does go up to floor 27. But I got bored waiting, hence I'm out of breath. That's another view from the other side. Construction going on down below. Look at those towers from above. Just thinking I should do a video like this in England, like council flat exploration. So that was nice. I think one misconception about these buildings, even though they might not look particularly attractive from outside, I love them by the way, um, they are attractive to me. Um, the difference with these inside, the interior, compared with ones in England, in England you would walk in and you'd be walking over puddles of piss, used heroin needles, and you'd come across people shagging up against a wheelie bin outside, but not here. You know, I live in quite an old building in Vracha, and even though it looks a bit dilapidated from outside, the inside is beautiful. And, you know, just because something might not look great from outside doesn't mean that people don't make an effort to improve or maintain the inside. And I'm sure people's flats in there are nice. I'm not sure of like the affluence level in this area of Belgrade. So perhaps there are some people that aren't particularly well off, but who knows? I'm in Ludo 2, the bar. Um, let's see if it's any different. Endless rows of apartment buildings. It reminds me of a bit like um, Minsk in Belarus when I went up the top of that rhombi cube octahedron library. I accidentally went down to the bottom floor because there were no numbers on the thing. There's even like a small little shop on the bottom floor, which um, goes with the whole communal thing. It is like a little community, which I guess was kind of the intention of these types of buildings. A little shop, playground, communal living. From this angle, you can really see like the stepped design all the way up to the top. I guess that's why one of the lifts only went a certain way, right? And you had to get another lift to get up to the top. Genius. Here's another classic Serbia thing. The chess tables. You know, the old men sit here on a Sunday morning playing chess or dominoes or whatever. That is very UK, you know, with the crummy garages covered in graffiti down the bottom. And those, um, you know, that concrete bit above the garages. It's very England, I guess, brutalist in general. Look at that. These buildings are iconic. I've enjoyed visiting them, shockingly, even though they're just tower blocks. But um, Eastern Gate, so, why is it called that? I think it's something to do with the fact that the Western Gate was like, one of the purposes of it was to be a monument, if you like, for people of power and authority arriving into Belgrade from the West. So like the Queen of, Eliz Queen of Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth used to come here. She used to stay in the Hotel Yugoslavia down by the river. Um, we've been there in that other video as well. Right, what'd you say? We go to an ATM, get some cash out, and then go to a bakery, because I could really do with some Bodexa sit on. One thing that still cracks me up about Serbia is that Only Fools and Horses is popular. Um, it's a TV show from the UK, in case you don't know. Basically about like a guy and his brother and his granddad and you know the disaster of their life and trying to sort of make a living through ducking and diving and doing whatever they have to and much hilarity ensues. And it's set in like a tower block in London and one of my English students did tell me that it, 
Serbs like it because it kind of represents the life of an average Serb trying to get by by doing whatever you have to do. But it's bizarre how something like Only Fools and Horses could be popular in Serbia. Right, okay, instead of getting Bodek, I decided I didn't want it for once. Um, so I went to a bakery that doesn't sell Bodek. Yes, that's a thing. A lot of people say that every bakery in Serbia sells Bodek. Well, it doesn't. Um, so <laughs> instead, I've got this absolute beautiful angel. Um, I don't know the name of it because it's in Cyrillic and that's even worse than my Latin alphabet Serbian. But it's, is it a pita sinica? Um, shush. So this is something I have all the time. I think you can get one with spinach in it as well. And meat, maybe. Sorry about the noise, but there's no other option. Um, basically, it's like a very crispy golden brown pastry full of cheese. Sir or sirom. What's the difference? I need to remember these things. Mm. Oh, God. As always, with Serbian pastry, you've got that crispiness. And then, as you can see there, it's like a soft bit. And it's just a wonderful mix of textures. And you'd think that this sort of thing wouldn't really fill you up, but at least with me, it does. It's so filling. It's perfect for like breakfast, lunch, brunch, whatever, or any time of the day, whatever. It's just beautiful. Crispy, cheese, soft inside, just like burek in terms of the texture. Stunning. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are going to start arguing in the comments about what that was called. Um, that's good, because it helps the algorithm, so feel free to call each other wankers. Um, and, um, yeah, for that, right, burek for me is like a flat pancake thing. I know you get it like spirally like that as well, but it's round. It's not that overly shaped. I'm sure I had that in Bosnia, and it was called Pita Sinica, but Bosnia, Serbia, there were always arguments between the two, but honestly, I don't really give a shit what it's called. The main thing is, is that it was nice. So let's stop stressing about the names of things in Serbia and just eat it. <laughs> Here we go, different types of burek. There's the flat one, which I normally have. Then you've got one that is kind of flat, but it's also kind of a spirally thing. What is in that one? Is that a sweet one? I've never seen that before. That looks like, um, is it spinach and onion or potato or something? Krompirom? I don't know. As you can see, there are many different types. Right, I need to cross the main road. It appears this blue bridge has miraculously appeared out of nowhere. Exactly for that purpose. Monday lunchtime in Belgrade. Busy, busy, busy. And also windy. Right, it's time to go under the road. Is this Guanajuato? Ah, oh, brilliant. No, it's not. Abandoned, overgrown subway exit. Wonder why that's like that. Maybe it's because there's a car park there now. Look at this graffiti ridden bridge. Orange, concrete, blocky. Beautiful. Right, I'm now at the Biggs building, B I G Z. It's a modernist building built from 1936 to 1941. It opened in 1941, it was the home to like a printing press and it was heavily damaged in World War II, the Axis invasion of Yugoslavia. And as you can see behind me, there are smashed windows, clapped out windows before I get run over. It's monumental, um, it's a huge building and um, I believe it's now kind of in use. I think like bands practice there and stuff and things like that, but in general, it looks like a shithole. But I've read online that you can get indoor, in, indoors, inside. There are like graffiti and stuff on abandoned floors, but I've just spoken to two security guards. They both shook their heads. No, I can't go in. There's a little break in around the back. I may not be able to get in, but I can walk around the back. What a hole. Oh, you've got like, I guess it's like almost art, that art deco kind of long window all the way at the top. I guess it's built in the 30s. 
stay quietly, I don't want to get arrested. Oh, what's in here? Looks like there's been a tornado in there. Now this is the sort of thing I love. <laughs> Look at this. Jesus in heaven, corrugated iron roofs collapsed. Oh, hang on, let's go in there. Okay, I've walked up some pitch black stairwell with cobwebs everywhere and old cardboard boxes into some old office. And there's B.I.G.Z building, Biggs building, right in front of us. Is this actually part of the same building? I'm not sure. Is this like the central area? I don't know. Look at those windows all the way up the top. And no window up there. If you killed someone, you could chuck someone out. <laughs> don't do that. Sorry, the lighting is awful. This office, or whatever it is, used to belong to the Barracuda Club. There's still one, um, maybe not on this floor, but the other one has carpet on the floor still and the woods, wood panelled walls still. This is the room next door. What in the name of Jesus is this? There's like pieces of material everywhere. Good job I haven't run into any crack holes. I wonder what this room was. You've got this circular stuff on the ceiling and this wall is all, I don't know what the word is, panelled. So I'm glad I've kind of got in, even if it is just in some clapped out offices. I can hear running water through there. I could go up these other stairs, but they'll probably be just the same old crap. So that's the building I was in. There are other ways into here, but that door, you can push it a little bit and then there's a padlock and a chain. So obviously, maybe security has been tightened. I'm sure it's used as like a crack den or, you know, places for homeless people to live. Oh, Biggs office group, um, no entry. Lovely. So I didn't get arrested, that's a plus. And also, I hope there wasn't any asbestos. That would not be good. Lovely. Well, it's all right, you know, it's an abandoned building. Should I have gone further up? I probably would have died. Now, up there is some sort of speech thing going on. So all the trams are parked up. There's like four of them. So I thought this is too good an opportunity to pass up because I love them. We can get a proper close up look of these trams. The green one is my favorite. These are the ones from Switzerland. Got this like big light on the front and the old fashioned retro kind of number at the top the button to get on obviously we will go actually go on some trams in future videos <laughs> never seen so many trams in one place Right, let's go home. Okay, this is editing, David. It's three days later because I forgot to film this bit the other day. Brilliant. And I want to end this video by talking about the theme of this video, which was personal interest, in case you didn't get it. Um, please, for the love of God, when you travel to places, don't just feel like you have to. Only go to the places which are recommended or the places that are on that ridiculous, unattainable, unachievable top 10 things to do list. Do things that interest you. If there's something that is obscure or what you think other people might see as boring or mundane do it for the love of god it's your experience it's not theirs who gives a shit about theirs do what you want to do you know i've been to belgrade four times now and you might think oh he hasn't been to all these nice pretty places i have i've filmed multiple videos in serbia before you can check them out in the playlist so why would i go to them again yeah don't feel obliged that you have to do the pretty nice things because these videos that I'm doing this year, also in Mexico, reflect normal life. I've been doing this for five years now. My life now is very much normal and I want my videos to also reflect that, to reflect 
my normal life, if you know what I mean. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you have enjoyed this, you're insane. Um, let me know down below what you think of Brutalist Architecture, <laughs> architecture, because it's bloody brilliant. And I'll see you next time from Smedanevo, I hope, which is not far away. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and all that. Check out the playlists over there and uh, the end screens even. I'll see you next time. Catch you later.